Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bank using the StarCraft 2 editor. Now what the banks do are they store information that you can use on any map play that would be stored between sessions so you can come back and save your game essentially. So what you're going to do is going up to go up to the triggers. I'm going to delete these initial things because they're not helpful in this situation. So what, if you have more than one player, what I like to do is create a new record. I'll name it stats. Now what this will do is it will allow you to have a bunch of variables which can be used by multiple players and be accessed very easily in code. So what you'll have to do is create a new variable name it the same thing as your record and scroll up to the top of this type and there's the record option and I like to make the array the number of players in your map say 4 so now you can access your record and any variables you have in here can be accessed individually by all four players so let's say I want to track the number of kills a unit has. Let's so make a new variable called kills. Keep it an integer. So now let's get to the banks part. So I'm going to make a new action definition, it's called. I'll name it bank initialization. So what you have to do is you have to load your bank before the map starts for it to recognize that there's a bank. So let's make a new action. Let's go to bank and preload bank. So give it a name. Let's name it demo bank. And notice how it says player one. So you're going to have to do this for all four players. Before you do that, you actually have to make a variable for the bank for it to store information. So let's go back to our record and make a uh, player bank and make it a type bank. So let's go back to our trick uh, action that we made and make a new action called set variable and you're going to want to set the here's our record and see the zero is the array that we just made and this member is all the variables in the uh, record that we can use so click on the zero and you're going to want to change it to player one for player one click on the member and we want player bank and we want to set that equal to function last opened bank because it is the last opened bank. So you're going to have to copy and paste that for all four players. You cannot use a loop for this as for some reason it causes errors. I'm not exactly sure why, but you cannot use a loop for this. That's all you need to know. So now you have your bank initialized, you need to load in the previous bank values so that you can display the save data. So this is where you can use a loop, so I'm going to do a pick each integer from one to as many players as there are in your map, and then I'm going to do a set variable action, and I'm going to set the kills that we made earlier, do function picked integer for the uh, array part. So I'm going to set the kills equal to the function load, uh, load integer value. So the key and sections are basically labels of where they're saved in a bank. So we're going to create these in the next part, 
but let's give it a name now that we just have to remember. So load kills from section stats, I'll call it. So I'm going to load the kills from the stats section of our save file. Instead of last opened, you will want to pick the uh, record that we made. You'll want to do pick integer as well. So now you have loaded up the previous value and the kills will equal the stored up value from your save file. So now let's right click and make a new action definition. So let's do a bank save. So this will save your bank. So let's do a let's do another loop. Pick each integer from one to four. So you want to create a new action, and you want to actually store the information. So say you have a decimal, you want to do real, but since kills is probably not a decimal, I'll just do an integer. So store the uh, record that we made, the kills of the picked integer, as this is the key that we made earlier. It has to be exactly the same, or your bank won't work. So, like stats in bank uh, variable, the record we made, and picked integer again. And then you have to do another action that is uh, save bank. And then instead of last opened, you want the record again. And there you go. You now have a saved bank. You have to do the save bank action after every time you change something or it won't work. So, if uh, you don't want to change or save every player at the same time, what you could do is change this parameter and add a player. I'll show that in fit. So first under the initialization all you can do is go into actions and it will show up as one of the actions. There it is. So now you have initialized your bank. So now let's make a simple trigger. I'm going to do it real quick. Just add Saturn Marine. So let's make a new trigger that tracks the kills, so under events, just going to go through this real quick, uh, since it's not particularly related to banks, so when a unit dies, I want to set a variable, the function killing player, kills equal to arithmetic the kills of the killing player plus one so this will add one kill every time a player dies so now we have this we can run the other action we made so let's do bank save and now you officially have completed a functioning bank using the StarCraft 2 editor. So let's see what happens when you need a parameter. So let's go back to the bank save and add a player parameter. And I'm going to move these out of the loop and delete the loop. Say if you just wanted one player instead of all of them, instead of picked integer, all you would have to do is go to parameter, click OK. And same with the save. So there you go. So now you go back to track kills, and notice that this will have clickable option now. So then you can change that to maybe killing player. 
and then it will only save the killing player's bank when this happens. So depending on your situation, you can choose either one of those two options that I have shown. And that is how you create a bank using the StarCraft 2 editor. Thank you for watching.